My name is Christian Puckett. This is Peacekeeper. I gotta be honest. I'm I'm really out of touch. Or like I'm out of practice from doing this because I haven't done a podcast in like a month. Oh. Um I was I was good for like a week or for months. Like I was doing it on a weekly basis. Yeah. But then uh, Richie was the last one I did, and that was like a month ago. And I took a, like a couple weeks to even put it out. Mm-hmm. I sat on it for a while. And so I was just like, I need to get back into the rhythm of podcasting. And I think it's going to be different going forward. I don't think it's going to be uh, similar to what I, what I was doing. I think it's going to turn into something that's more... Uh, not so like structured and scheduled. I think I'm just going to put them out whenever I do them and maybe a week will go by, maybe a couple weeks will go by. This is not important to you. I'm just like, it is. Um, <laughs> I'm a frequent listener. <laughs> I need an, is there a reason why did you just like work and I think work. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're going by the way. Hi everybody! Welcome to the pod- <laughs> the podcast. This is my good friend Kaylin Shaw. Say- Hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Um, I I'm actually proud of you for not bailing. Oh, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say something like that. <laughs> I I figured you gave me many options. <laughs> I I ex- okay, and I'll just say this: I expect people to bail because. Uh-huh. I think this is one of those things where you're like, yeah, sure. But then the week comes and you're like, oh, I don't actually want to do that. That's kind of awkward. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Yeah. Um, what was I saying? Oh, okay. So yes. So I, I kind of started this podcast as a way to kind of engage the more like kind of intellectual side of my brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then recently... As in like three weeks ago, I started a new position at Whole Foods and that's just consuming all of my brain power. Yeah. Um, And it's a good position and it's like the most quote unquote real job I've had. But it's just like I have to focus on (laughs) making sure I don't fuck up. And then I'm already kind of settling into like a little bit more confidence with it. Uh, and I think I'll try to get back to doing this regularly, but I'm not going to make this as like high of a priority as it, as it was. Cause also I had nothing to do <laughs> for a long time. Whenever I had that parental leave, I'm just going. Um, yeah. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm okay. I, What's up? I hate that question. How are you doing? Okay, let me it, let me backtrack. It's not like it's not it it's not insulting or anything, but like I'm I have the <laughs> urge to like be honest. Yes. So yes. And like when I people get that. are like, How are you doing? But because of where I work, I can't just be like that to every person that I see. They're like, How are you doing? And it feels just like tiring to be like, I'm okay, how are you doing? But then there's 100%, yeah. some people who come in and they're like, how are you? I'm like, not great. What can I do for you? <laughs> yeah. How can I serve you? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it feels good to be like honest for like a slight second, but. It kind of breaks the, like this like weird monotony of. Yeah. Like behavior. Or like just like this, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but this behavior that we're all engaging in of just like, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. yeah what can I do for you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have a good day. It takes, it takes away from the, the. Like, I like to, it's funny to see people's reactions when I'm, like, I'm not doing okay. And it just, like, takes them aback. And they're just, like, <laughs> it, like, puts them into the moment. And they're, like, I did ask what, like, how you were doing. And you responded. And I'm, like, still staring at them. Like, okay, now let's go back to the, <laughs> let's go back. What do you need? <laughs> yeah. I, I've noticed that whenever I get that, I'm just, like, yeah, I'm not too bad. Mm-hmm. But then a coworker of mine kind of broke that down. <laughs> She's like, not too bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're like, all oh, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I was just saying not too bad. But I guess when I think about it, that could be perceived as, oh, I'm not 
not that bad. But it's just like, oh, yeah. that's not the best answer to give. Oh, I'm not bad. Yeah. Um, okay, but anyway, I'll, I'll ask it with more intentionality. How are you doing? Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting there. You're it's, getting where? Um, <laughs> good, good question. <laughs> um, I'm getting. I I guess the last couple months have been a little rough for me, but. It's just like a, a treading. It feels like I'm like in the middle of a lake and I'm just like tired and mm. I've been swimming for a while and I see the shoreline and I'm like, God, and then I want to rest, but I'm in the middle of the lake and trying to not drown. Yeah. And, and there is, I don't know. I don't know. Never been there. <laughs> God, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to that shore. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what the destination is. You yeah. don't know what the, yeah. the point of arrival is. Yeah, but I see it, and it's something, obviously, I, I need to get there and to. Yeah. But. So, like, the lake is just life in general, or is the lake something specific? Oh, what is this lake metaphor? This lake <laughs> is just life in general, I guess. It's just, like, like. Right now, I'm going through, like, a lot of, like, family stuff, and Oof. it's mainly just family and a little bit of, like, work stuff, but that's so separate from who I am that it's just, sometimes I feel things pull me in. Yeah. And and I have to, like, ground myself and be like, no, that doesn't involve me. That's not, that's not who I am, and I don't know, but right now, I'm doing good. I, I earlier in the the year, I was doing a lot of training and oh right yeah 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 for um i was going for city firefighting and then i think a lot of things happen along the way that i didn't consider like mm. responsibilities and like i have two dogs now and a cat and i didn't consider the time away that was taking from them and then it was adding more stress to my actual life and yeah so I think that's part of the, the, the lake analogy. It's like, it felt like I was just overwhelming myself with um, a lot of ambitions. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing, but yeah. there's a time and a place <laughs> for ambitions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So you're, that's on pause. That's mm -hmm. on hiatus. Yeah. Well, so it's like a yearly thing. So next year is the goal essentially i'd rather be fully prepared and go in with like just better prepared i guess and, yeah and knowing what i'm getting into and hopefully my young children pups will not be so annoying and so dependent yeah so yeah okay so a city firefighter mm -hmm. what does that entail um, so I think there's three different like categories. So there's like wildland, there's um like um paramedic, EMT, and basically it's just you're in a in a firehouse for like two days straight and then you go home for Wait, okay, days. so th I've I've kind of always heard about that, but I've maybe never actually heard it explained but you're you only work two days a week but it's non-stop yeah so Is it's like it kind works? of like on call stuff like obviously it's like dormitory like stuff so it's like you're you're living with people in your in your firehouse or whatever but like that's like probably longer down the line of getting there I'd have to go through the academy like it would be a whole year and a half process to get to that point and for that, like, I don't truly understand um, that schedule yet because yeah. I don't like to think that far ahead. <laughs> 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 but it's basically I have to I have to get through the the physical and emotional roughness of it's so tiring. Like, I didn't I don't think I've ever experienced the academy or like the training stuff. Just the training, okay. yeah. The like um, CPAT was pretty intense like what is CPAT it's the s certification f of physical ability test okay and basically you have to do like eight physical things to prove that you're capable of like 
it's kind of like an adult jungle gym, <laughs> but you have to finish okay. it in a certain amount of time. It kind of sounds fun. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> I, that's what I thought too. But that's what somebody who has not done it says. Yeah. I'm sure. It's, um, I don't think I've like physically been pushed to like cry like that. And I don't think ever, but I cried a lot <laughs> and I had to take the test a few times and mm-hmm. I don't know. Again, like, I think that pushed me far enough to be, like, I want to do this better and be more intentional yeah, and be okay. physically ready. Because, like, I think what got me was endurance stuff. I can't breathe, like, <laughs> well. <laughs> I learned that. Um, That's a good learning moment, though. It's just like, <laughs> okay, this is a goal that I have, mm-hmm. and I got a taste of what it actually entails. And I realized, I mean, I do this shit all the time of just like realizing where I'm currently at versus where I want to be. It's like, Oh, I'm still at the very bottom of, the, of this <laughs> mountain and it's going to take yeah. years and years and years, whether that's physical or mental or, you know, like career wise or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is like physical for me. of just like, dang, I want to be at this point where I see other people at, but I'm just like, I'm still just this like scrawny little kid who like I need to like go to planet fitness after this. And <laughs> like, there's a lot of shit where I'm still just like a beginner and I, yeah. I want, I don't know. Okay. So, but why, why firefighting specifically? Like, is there, a- um, I think, I needed like a physical and emotional challenge and that seemed like like the best option because I was considering like nursing school. Mm-hmm. I was going to go back to school for um um I want to do art therapy and hmm. my line of work <laughs> like bartending is like I realized that I don't really want to like nursing is its own service industry like it is still the service industry and I thought I think that I was like trying to escape Mm, the service industry and I I don't think my head was in the right like if I were to do nursing I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that because it's not for the right reasons I Mm. think I've learned and okay yeah um nursing sounds brutal oh yeah yeah like from the outside you kind of think about oh like being a nurse that that could like potentially be a good career field but then when you actually speak to nurses or probably actually see what they do on a daily basis Mm -hmm. that shit's not glamorous like that's brutal I always think about like when we worked at Flying Star together um like all the regulars like I still to this day get really emotional thinking about like any of them passing away yeah and I'm like I don't think I have the heart for that too I'm like I'm already getting like teary-eyed like thinking of like <laughs> blue <laughs> do you remember blue yeah I was about to say blue and like um the lady would like wear the like fishing like vest she would get like the, mm. the salad and every day she would come in and get like the Chinese crunch or whatever okay um, yeah well yeah I think about that and I still keep in touch with some of the regulars but I think I've like weaned off keeping up with them because i'm like you're getting close <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah i guess you probably have to deal with a lot of death in that position but also not even death but just like sadness and just like disease and um <laughs> your face <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know i just I I think about the times that I've been in that system of like whether I'm like going to urgent care or like going to see the doctor and stuff and just I don't know the waiting rooms are always just so sad and even like taking Aesop and Ira Mm -hmm. I don't know it's just like I'm sure it's a lucrative career field if you're into that but you probably have to really be in it for the right reasons of like you genuinely care about helping people like achieve better health or whatever your reason is but it probably just can't be the money or else you're just gonna get burnt out especially during covid like i i know like a couple nurses that were at the un like unmh and that's like 
that's doing the holy work right there. It's just like I being admire and respect COVID. it. The 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 stuff that they have to go through is like it takes a certain kind of someone to do that. Yeah. And again, like I admire it, but then there are sometimes where I go to uh, like a good friend of mine was in the hospital for a while and no one was visiting her, and so I would go and see her, and she was like it was just clear that the nurses were tired and just like Mm. not like it was clear and that it was upsetting, but also I'm not in their shoes. So it's, but yeah, so that firefighting just seemed like, yeah. Um, a different, again, physical and mental challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Still kind of, I mean, it's a service too. It's a different, Mm -hmm. it's not, customer service but it's still like a service yeah um there's still like really good purpose and meaning behind it um and i feel like firefighters are cool (laughs) right they're like the cool ones they're so i yeah yeah i guess i've learned a lot too (laughs) like being around them um it's very um they, they they throw around the word brotherhood a lot and it, it, I don't know, it feels, obviously every, um, not industry, but every mm, field, yeah. every, I yeah, there's, it's always going to be like male dominated, like mm. it, it, it's very intimidating. I remember taking my, my physical test and, um, I was the only girl in the class and it was I think like 30 to 40 people. And they said that that was the biggest class that they've had in a while. Dang. And these guys were like following me around during my test to like, it was so intimidating. Like Mm, everyone was just like fine when other people were doing it. Like it was very apparent that some people like weren't going to pass certain tests or whatever. Uh But like once I like stepped up on that, like stair step or whatever, like everyone crowded around me and it, I don't know. Were they rooting for you? Some of them really were. And and like I could tell some of them like were in the background. Like I could feel it where they're just like doubting me or. Okay. Which is yeah. okay because that motivates me. That's that like really motivates me when people <laughs> doubt me. Um, and then it was really helpful that a lot of them were cheering me on and stuff. But I don't know. I, I think that was the first time I cried. <laughs> <laughs> on the stair step or no, not okay. on it <laughs> okay. i was too busy blacking out <laughs> <laughs> did you really i did i, I tunneled Brutal. out yeah it was really bad because you have to have 75 pounds on you and you have Ooh. to yeah like helmet gloves and 75 pounds and you have to go for i forgot how long i think a minute and 20 seconds which sounds pretty easy but yeah i'm sure with all the gear on yeah yeah and that's when I, like, how do you continue going on when you're physically, like, tunneling out, like, yeah. seeing stars and just. <laughs> I asked Emily yesterday. No, it was this morning. I was like, hey, I mean, she knew I was going to have you on, but I was like, okay. hey, I'm having Kaylin on. Is there anything that you would want to know about Kaylin or (laughs) be interested in hearing. Mm -hmm. And she uh, was like, she would be curious to, to hear about your sense of humor. Oh no. (laughs) This has been a topic for the last couple of weeks. (laughs) It's a real thing. Um, And I, in fact, I actually, I wrote down a few notes Uh on my notes app, but that was one of the questions of just like, okay, you i really appreciate your sense of humor and i feel somewhere deep down like we can actually connect on a humor level i agree um and i don't know exactly how to ask this but how would fuck this that's a terrible way to ask this question i just want to talk about humor so (laughs) where do you think you get your sense of humor dude it comes from a dark place (laughs) Okay, no, I can get that. I yeah. can see that. Um, I think I, I I struggle with being positive about things, not necessarily well because 
I have just like a dark history with my life and stuff. And I think my way of like jumping out of that, but being realistic about things is to make like <laughs> very like sharp, true, mm. funny jokes. Cause everything is funny in, in a, in a, if you look at it in like that kind of light, like yeah, I could easily just be like super depressed about things and just like, pull mm -hmm. myself down or whatnot but like <laughs> it's just like I also like talking about things too so it's when um like someone says something and I'm just like ah, oh, I'm gonna throw something in really fast and I'm just like and if you have a question about it let's <laughs> talk about it <laughs> I appreciate that I, yeah. I think I mean I've I've found myself I've had this kind of arc with my humor mm -hmm. of Maybe when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I truly didn't care at all what other people thought about me. And I was just like the funny guy. And I didn't mind saying what needed, not needed to be said, but saying what could be said for a joke mm -hmm. and not caring how other people would interpret it. But then I think I got a little bit older and I do think me coming I guess just like coming of age a little bit and then also kind of the times we're in, I've kind of lost a lot of that of like being able to, I just overthink my jokes now. And so I'm just like, ah, I'm just not going to say anything anymore because oh, I don't want, and that's sad. And, and like, oh, I don't, man. but also maybe that's okay. Um, Cause I don't know. I, I, I really hate like when people get offended and I don't like being that person anymore. Um, so I kind of just like my sense of, I feel like I've lost my sense of humor a little bit, but there's been times where I've like, I can see the spark <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> damn, it. It, but it's like with certain people, like I can, I can, what's nice is that I can throw a joke at you and I know that like you can, take the joke yeah and vice versa but then there's other people where i'm just like i'm not gonna say anything because i don't know how you're gonna take it because yeah. every because i've 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 like said the wrong things before and then like Same. people have been taking take it the wrong way and i'm like oh shit i shouldn't have said that yeah but. and i think also i'm getting to this like age where I don't, I, I care what people think about my jokes and stuff or like what I have to say, but it, if you don't know me well enough to like <laughs> not get offended by it or like, there's always some truth to something. You yeah. Know? So it's like, if I say something and it did offend you, I would hope that like I surround myself with the people who like would have that conversation with me or like talk to me about those things and be like, yeah, dude, that hurt my feelings or whatever. And I'd be like, okay sorry adjusting <laughs> but it's like it, it it feels like a learning curve because I feel that too where I'm like I'm not funny anymore um but that's also because I don't I haven't been like hanging out with anyone I Same. just don't yeah I mean I'm funny to Aesop but yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah my sense of humor is just like lost but yeah I think during you know maybe the last when we were hanging out a whole bunch uh -huh we were all homies and we were all just like having a good time and there was space for jokes and laughter. Yeah. But now I'm just like, yeah, I got like responsibilities and stuff. And so <laughs> life is more serious yeah. these days, but that's not to say that there's not a space for comedy and humor. I don't know. I just, I really admire and respect comedians these days like all the comedians that have like their podcasts and i love that shit because yeah. they're just having a silly goose time I, <laughs> <laughs> I hate and love the silly goose stuff <laughs> wait i don't even know what that is what is that no it's like, i just said silly goose but is that okay. a thing well i mean so you would normally say silly goose right like because that's a thing that you just say yeah but like on the interweb it's like there's like memes about just like in my silly goose era or something. And I'm like, what? dang, <laughs> also, I'm just so far removed from all of the yeah. Internet culture these days. Yeah. So I don't even know what the memes are these days. That's also another thing I was thinking about. Like no one 
humor so generalized now that like I don't think I'm funny because I think the internet is relevant now we're just like I think of something that I think is unique and funny and I'm like haha to myself and I like open my phone and it's just like right there and I'm like <laughs> oh, cool yeah <laughs> so it's just like in anything that I say it doesn't feel unique anymore that's true yeah because someone so many people are like on their phones all the time and they like know more than I do about like small weird facts or just like yeah. jokes they've seen someone make or they've made or whatever and so when I say something it's just like Sometimes people are just like, hurt it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hurt it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I used to, like, I used to also be kind of, like, internet funny. Like, mm -hmm. I used to make funny videos and, like, have, uh, like, funny meme accounts and shit like that. Yeah. Um, which, like, since I'm not on the internet as much anymore, I guess just, like, the internet or I'm sorry, the Instagram meme pages were a big source of like lulls for me. And that was a way for me to like try to express some dark twisted humor. <laughs> um, so yeah, less of that these days. Have you ever thought about being a, a comedian? <laughs> oh no. No. no? I, in, I could see it. I could in, see you being a comedian. It's like, it's stressful just even thinking about it because they get so much yeah. like flack. Um, I also have stage fright, I think. Like, I don't know if a lot of people have been calling me or like pointing out my awkwardness and just like my like say something and walk away kind of stuff. But it's been putting me in my head where I'm just like, I don't think of it like that. Like I say what I need to say. And then like if I finally need to walk away, I'll walk away. <laughs> and I'm sorry if that's like... um not socially acceptable <laughs> but i feel like you're also the same way too oh yeah where you're just like i'm done here and then you just like walk away and i'm like respect that and um yeah i don't think i could do stand up i don't again it's like hurting people's feelings and <laughs> people are choosing to listen to me at this point so it's just like where yeah. i could like select my crowd and like be funny with them and i don't know I also don't feel like I have a lot to say about a lot of things. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> but you could, I mean, I guess it is like an, a craft that you have to like work on. I don't know. I, I mean, in all honesty, I don't know who in their right minds would actually be like, I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. Like you probably have to, yeah, there's some demons there for sure. Yeah. Um, the idea of it is like funny, but in reality, like, if you were to be a stand-up comedian, I'd be like, oh, shit, is Kaylin okay? <laughs> like, and then at the, in the same breath, you're all, I could see it. <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would, I, would, I would support you fully. Thanks. If you decided to. Um, but I don't know about the comedy scene here in Albuquerque. Yeah. You'd probably just have to do something online. Um, I would do some, like, roast battles. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, we could do that like internally with our friend group. Yeah, we which don't we have already to air do. It. <laughs> <laughs> we already do. Oh man, um, friends. Uh. Okay, let me backtrack. Do you do you have family here in town, um, or is most of your family out of town? Most of them are out of town, but my brother just moved back last year to go to college. Here. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So you've got a family member in town. That's nice. Uh -huh. Is that nice? It is, yeah. It, it's, it's. I feel like I've grown so much in this like last year than I ever have in my entire life. And my brother being here was probably a big role in that because it's like grounding in a way. Like I've been without my family for like nine years. Um, they moved away when I was I think eighteen to Virginia, and I stayed here. And I don't know, it's just, it's, it's something different about like, like my brother is so awkward. Like he is so awkward and like quiet. And How like, old is he? He's, he just turned 22 this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's like my brother's age. Yeah. They're, okay. I think very close with their birthdays too, but right. Um, uh, 
uh, <laughs> April 12th. <laughs> yeah, uh, April 26th for my brother. And Dang, okay. Yeah. Um, no, it's been, it's been, it's been nice having him around because he'll just like come over and just like sit there and there's like, that's my favorite kind of bonding with anyone I could have is that's like great. just be here, but like, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> And like that's so true. Just like somebody sitting on the couch on their phone. Yeah. Like that's a level of comfort. Yeah. And like he's family, so I'm like not gonna be there's no room for like me being offended by anything. So you could just like he has a key to my house, like he'll just come in, sit on the couch and like play with the dogs or like watch TV or yeah. like I'll come I'll come at home and stuff's move or moved around. I'm like, okay, it's my brother. Like Yeah. It's comforting because I've lived alone for so long now where it's like when things get moved around and stuff, it's just like, <laughs> like I'm not alone. Somebody's here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually meant to ask this more towards the beginning, mm-hmm. but I forgot. Maybe because I don't even, I'll be honest. I don't even know if I fully know your whole like story just in general, of, like where you're from, like whatever it is. Um, and I'm sure all of the listeners <laughs> are curious would love to know some backstory um what is like your quick i mean it doesn't have to be quick but like your life summary like your life story to where you are right now like i would love to hear that um i guess i could just like name off some things that are like significant in my life but um i grew up born and raised in albuquerque um i had a weird family dynamic, very small family. I don't have a big family. Um, um, I grew up in Moriarty. I didn't know that. Yeah, I grew up in Moriarty, and I would, my parents, <laughs> my parents would drive to Albuquerque every morning. I would be about four thirty every morning, get ready, come to Albuquerque, and my parents would literally drop me off on the side of the freeway, and I would <laughs> jump on the city bus to go to school. <laughs> The freeway? Oh, that's like dramatic, but like off ramp. Okay, get out of the car. Still. <laughs> okay, you yeah. you'd catch the bus to school. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd ride the city bus back, and then meet up at like another family member. So like my uncle lived here. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've been. I grew up in like tight, tiny homes, and just like not the best upbringing. I humbly humble I guess would yeah. be the best way to put that and when we moved back to Albuquerque it was all six of us living in a two-bedroom apartment um I moved out early um I think I was 16 when I moved out it was just not a good time yeah um, there's a lot of tension and a lot of just like there's a lot of like trauma on my mom's end and yada yada but um yeah so I've been on my own since I was 16 lived in Rio Rancho for two years I didn't know that either yeah what part of Rio Rancho Um, I mean I don't know if that's Northern Meadows is that considered Rio Rancho it's like past the Star Center oh yeah 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 so I lived out there the literally nothing to do because I didn't have a car or anything so it's just a lot of were you out there by yourself or did you have like I was roommates with, or whatever? I was with my um, uncle's girlfriend or wife okay. at the time. So they kind of like took me in. Um, and then I went to college. When I started going to college, I would like stay in Albuquerque because it was exhausting to like, again, ride the bus all the way yeah. to Rio Rancho and figure that out. And then I ended up just like moving back to Albuquerque and getting couch hopping. And this is a blur. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I eventually got my own apartment. And then I started talking to my parents again and fixing that relationship. And then then I I think this is around the time where I started, where I met you. Okay. It was I, when I started working at Flying Star. Dang, how old were you when you started working at Flying Star? I think 19, 18 maybe. Okay, I was... Like 19. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so probably 19. Because remember the next year I thought I turned 21. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. So I, I'm going to, I was going to say the story, but I don't think I know it fully. You should say the story. 
My birthday? Okay, wait, okay. Or- Let me- <laughs> so you thought that you were turning 21, but you were actually a year off? <laughs> yeah, so my... <laughs> My family didn't celebrate my, I've never had like a birthday. I've never like had any kind of birthday party. Okay. And so I didn't know my age for a (laughs) solid like three years. Like, not that I was like, I don't know how old I am kind of stuff. Obviously I could figure that out, but like subconsciously, I don't know. I'm there right now. Like I'm literally, yeah. people ask me my age. I'm like, I think I'm like between 26 and 28. I don't know. Yeah, same. <laughs> and I thought I was, okay. But like my age has been thrown off ever since then. So on my 20th birthday, my dad called me and he's like, happy 21st. And like, I was like sick. Yeah. And I was in the same, end. I was in the same space too. I was like, cool. T- 21. <laughs> Fine. You guys were like drinking before me. Like I was like ready to actually go out and like yeah. go to a bar. I think Alas, was, you were a year off. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. So, what year were you born? <laughs> 95. Okay, so uh, we were actually born how many days apart? Like five, six. Five or six days apart. June 2nd, May 28th. Oh. Right? Yeah, You're 28th? Yeah, five days. Wait, January, February, March, April, May. Five days. Five days, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Right? We're both the Gemini <laughs> folk. <laughs> us gemini's what were we talking about oh my okay family stuff oh yeah family stuff yeah uh college met you flying star lived by myself um also like you asked me about my family and i've i've been going to like therapy and like nice i don't remember a lot about my childhood and I like sometimes I'll drive by a place like I recently went kayaking and I drove by Alameda Elementary School and I was like, mm-hmm. I went to that elementary school. <laughs> really? Yeah. And like didn't remember that until recently or like I drove by a church and I was like, that was the first funeral I've been to. And like, whoa. And like that brings back like where I lived because I used to live off Alameda and I forgot about that. Um, And then, yeah, it just. There's a lot of things I don't remember. And it's really nice to, like, write that stuff down. I've been writing a lot because I think that's important for me to, like, revisit and reminisce of, like, why I am the way I am. <laughs> and, like, yeah, I don't know. Um, how lo- I'm curious about therapy stuff because I started going to therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, how long have you been doing it? So right now, it, I'm not... I don't have my person right now. So it's, that's the struggle. Um, But a few years ago, I, I was going to therapy and the person that my therapist, I like loved her, but Mm -hmm. she, she broke up with me. She, she moved away and like my insurance didn't cover. We tried to do the online zoom stuff and I don't know, that was kind of, it kind of like fed with my like, um fed into my um abandonment issues i think Mm. so when she left i was like damn yeah that's tough it was hard it's hard to replace her because like it also is like revisiting all the things that i feel like i've gotten over or i've like come to terms with so it's like when i started therapy this month again they ask the questions that i don't want to talk like i but they like need that to like understand me yeah and and you're like i already told this all to my last therapist (laughs) i don't want to have to rehash it all (laughs) you all should just communicate with each other and normally that would be a thing like she asked me her information too so that might be um, a possibility but yeah no i i i love it i don't think i sorry (laughs) i don't think i necessarily like need it all the time but then when i go i'm like damn i needed that yeah (laughs) yeah i i did it for like i did it for like two or three months during my parental leave Mm -hmm. and i think it was just so vital like i just i had to get this shit out (laughs) like i just had to vent and luckily my therapist she was like 
this girl from Puerto Rico. She was really cool. I actually, it was all virtual. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I feel like just those like eight sessions I had spaced out over that time. So good. So valuable. So many tools. Um, I, I just wish that I could go deeper. Like that's kind of what I wanted. Like she asked me at the beginning she's like, what do you want to get out of this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just, I want perspective. Like I just want a complete outsider looking at my life. Um, just like, give me some general insight. I just like, cause all I have is what's in my head and all I have is my own past experiences and the people around me. But it's kind of fascinating and interesting to just have somebody completely outside of yeah. your circle yeah. be able to look in and be like, mm, maybe that's a red flag. Mm, maybe you need to fix that. Um, and I have the option to go back. Um, I'll probably have to like pay for it, though. It's not going to be covered by insurance anymore. Um, I just always want to keep that door open because... I ho I hope to never get to a place where I'm like, yeah, I don't need therapy. I'm good. <laughs> like, yeah. I think I always need it. And it's just if if I have the the ability and the availability, then I need to do it because yeah. all the input I can get from anybody, I'll take <laughs> like I'll take it. Yeah. It's also when I was going, I would do weekly and after a while she told me that I should be coming bi-weekly. And then after a while, she's like a month. And I was like, I, no. was, I was kind of getting like sad. And I was like, I she's trying to problems. create separation. <laughs> no, it was like, she's like, I know I'm going to lose you. So let's <laughs> space this out. It was her letting me know that like, because I think I felt myself go from um, being anxious and like, hyper aware of situations which fed my anxiety to like taking that hyper awareness to being just being just generally aware and intentional that's yeah. something I've been working on a lot lately is my intentions and because that's something that I feel like I've, I've hurt a lot of people or I can hurt a lot of people is just like not being intentional with what I say what I do and like just how I am in in general and so even like taking that and applying it to myself. It's just like, it's very apparent you're an aware person. So just like use that and like transform it into something better to mm. like be better for yourself, to help your anxiety, to help your like, um, I, I, I think I used to, well, I know I used to be a reactive person and like, I'm not that way anymore. I can be, but like, I feel myself being like, okay, this is a situation. This is what's going on. Take a minute and be better I guess or just like do be intentional about what you're gonna how you're gonna go forward and yeah therapy has helped me get there and I don't know it's nice yeah so like you'd be reactionary to like outside input would like throw you off or like you didn't have it, it was internal like or yeah, I don't know. Like fight or flight kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it'd always be like fight. So it's like someone could say something and the witness of like my dark humor, like I would just like jab humor and then just like not think that through of like how that could hurt someone or just like even like being angry at someone and just like shutting off and just like yeah. I'm done kind of stuff. Instead, like I'd like to be there and be present and – consider it and yeah you know i guess reactionary i that's probably the right word for that but i like to think things through in a healthy way yeah i think i there's a couple things to say like i am a person that i don't think i'm reactionary mm -hmm. at all uh i'm like the complete opposite end of just like i'm so non <laughs> reactive to where I just like everything's just in my head and like I'm just in constant analysis mode and like observant mode and trying to understand and decode um but I also learned from my therapist just like how much shame I carry from 
my upbringing. And this is a whole other thing is that shout out to my parents. I love you, mom and dad. I know they listen to the podcast and I'm just trying to find this like, I'm just trying to toe the line of just like how much do I want to share and be honest yeah. about what I now think about my upbringing, knowing that my parents are listening without like being disrespectful to them because I also like I do have respect for them and I know that like they were just doing their absolute best and I don't feel like there was no there was no abuse um there was no neglect there was just like it was a loving and positive upbringing but I just like I'm also at a point where I'm an adult now and I'm trying to like analyze like I was saying everything and that part of that is my past so, um, I'm just aware of it. I'm like thinking about it. I'm working on it. Um, yeah, I guess we don't have to say too much more about that for no. like the listeners sake. But I also think that's an important and again that you're like your shame is layered right there. Yeah. Like you're, you just showed that you have like the shame <laughs> yep. and then you express that and then you like covered it up with yeah. shame. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think that's super important because you're a dad and you have yeah. a family of your own and it's good to, to think about those things. And like, I wish my parents did that. And I wish like more people did that to consider, um, the choices they made, the people, the, the, the lives they brought into this world where it's like, yeah, the things specifically like my dad and my, my mom went through, I think like they talk about that more now and they show some kind of regret of just like, I wish I would have thought these things through or just like, cause they would do certain things and then be like, well, my parents would have done this. And mm. it's just like, so you're aware of like the things that you went through, but you're not applying it to be better in a way. Mm, and yeah. I think that's super important that you're reflecting on that and you're understanding those things because those things will affect your little ones. Yeah. And yeah. in, I don't know. I don't think it's so, in, it, you're not insulting your, your family. That's, no. that's your reality. Like that's yeah. how, that's how you're perceiving who you are and why you are the way that you are. And I don't know. It's not just about you. If that's where the shame's coming from. No, that's true. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah. Th having kids really just, puts so many things in perspective and it just like reminds me of how difficult it is and how probably difficult it was for my parents mm -hmm. to raise four kids. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Wait, did you have three other siblings? Yeah. You're part of four kids. Yeah. That shit's brutal. Yeah. And I, I couldn't even think about the that. age that I am right now. My mom had all of us. So I'm like, Whoa. Okay. Yeah. 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 Whoa. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. And that's young. Yeah. To have four kids. Yeah. My mom had my sister, my older sister, when she was 21, I think. And then I, it just blows my mind. And it also gives me a lot of, I give my parents a lot of grace because I'm like, if I had yeah. kids at that <laughs> age, I don't think that I, I, I don't, I don't know. There's always room for growth too. So it's like my conversations that I have with my, my parents to this day are still like, they're still growing. Yeah. And totally. like my perspective of like how I grew up is helping them too. So it's like, I liked, I love to have those like honest conversations with my parents and be like, remember when this happened and like, this is what I did. And like, you probably saw me as this or whatever, but this is where my headspace was. And yeah, where were you at? Like, what were you thinking when this happened? And it's, it's honestly so nice to hear them reflect on, where they were and like where I am too at this age. And just like, there's a lot of grace that can be given to me and to them as well. And, but granted I didn't grow up in like a religious upbringing or all of you guys, all of my friends, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. You guys all I know, grew right? up in a, in a, in the church. And yeah. I didn't. And, we had this friend group, I guess, for people listening, where essentially all of us, right, mm -hmm. were kind of like 
deconstructing our like religious upbringing yeah. and Caitlin was the only one that was just like yeah. yeah I don't know what you guys are going through sorry <laughs> I mean I hope it didn't come off that way like where I'm just no like, it would mean it, yeah whatever I, it was fine I am um, it was nice to have a perspective of like that was different from all of ours yeah you guys were funny I think it, it was funny like when I met you guys I was like whoa <laughs> Yeah, lots of trauma bonding. Yeah, and we were like still all going to church, and we would invite you to church. Really? Yeah, but like the um, what was it called? Outlet, outlet, right? The oh. one up in the heights. Like yeah. we would still go to that for a while, yeah. right? Yeah. And we like brought you. I don't know, but like it was like during that point, I think of all of our lives where we were like trying to figure out what our relationship is. Yeah what it, our relationship with it would look like going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I just, like, can't do it right now. <laughs> no, it's so funny. The, the things that I would think of, too, like, when people would take me to church, because I remember, like, that was my way of, like, hanging out with my friends in, like, high school. Like, Mom, can we go to 212? <laughs> like, do you remember? 212, what is that? It was, I think it was Copper Point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was like the youth, youth. Yeah, there was another one at Copper Point. Like Wake, woke, something. Wake? Like that. Or was two twelve Calvary? I don't know. I don't know, but just like some sort of like young kid oriented mm-hmm. like group where there's yeah. cool music and. My mom was so weirded out when I started going to church. Like not weirded out, but like she's like she didn't raise us like that, so she's like yeah. But she was also very open with like, um us having questions about like religion like i remember one time i asked her i was like what are jehovah witnesses like what i don't get it and she's like i don't know either so we went to like one of their meetings really yeah and this was like in high school or like middle school and and she would just do that like we would just like go different places or just like try to understand things and i'm very appreciative of that too like there was that sounds great yeah like yeah i like i feel like i would hope to have that same response to aesop where he's just like, I don't know, like, what is, like, Catholicism or what is Judaism? And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like, yeah. let's let's see if it works. <laughs> let's yeah, try let's, it out. Let's see if it works. Um, but, yeah, no, when I would start going to, like, church, I didn't think of it as going to church. And it wasn't, like, going frequently. It was literally just to hang out with my friends. Yeah. And because I wasn't, like, I didn't have the ability to, like, hang out and go to the skate park or sleepovers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I remember like being there one night and I'm like, do the fog machines and laser lights like not put you off in a way? Like, I don't know. It's like so, it's so cool. It's so weird. It's so cool. <laughs> but the, and I mean weird in like a way of like a foreign to me. Yeah. And it, I don't know. Wait, would you go to Copper Point or Calvary? Um, both. Just to like, just I for was, the I was the a hangs. hopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so like, if you were, so like, how did your mom approach the subject when you were a kid of like what religion is, or was it just like we don't necessarily have this like we don't have. I don't know how to say it, but like, was there a, anything that you guys followed at all? Or was it just like, we don't do anything? No. I mean, there was also no discussion about it. Hi, you do. Um, my mom grew up like heavy Catholic and like, Mm -hmm. um, she has a lot of her traumas from that. So I think she was just like over it at, at some point. And I don't know if my mom's still religious. I know my dad is, um, but I th- I remember, like, she tried to take us to church frequently after a while. And, like, we would, like, sit down at the dinner table and, like, try to read the Bible. Like, literally try to read the Bible. And, like, we all were, like, yeah, Like, <laughs> let's just eat dinner now. <laughs> like, um, but there was no discussion about it. It just was not existent. Okay. And, and uh, of course, like, my mom would talk to me about, why she doesn't want to go back to the church or whatever and i don't know i don't i didn't really think about that 
don't know. Yeah. But also, like, I think back, we're just like, it. this doesn't apply to, like, everyone. But, like, I have morals. I have, like, I don't commit. That's the word I was trying to find. Of well, just, like, morals. <laughs> morals. Like, did your family have, like, morals that were, like, written morals or something like that? Like, an yeah. ethical code <laughs> that y'all followed, but. That's interesting. I want to. I've been writing a lot lately, and I feel like that's something I, I need to revisit, too, because I, I don't know where that comes from. Or like, why am I such a good person? <laughs> <laughs> if, that's that's how I feel about Emily's younger brother, Hudson. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just, like, the best kid. He's such a good little, like, yeah. sport. I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, what makes certain people just so well behaved? It is so funny. I don't know who I was talking to about it the other day, but I feel like I'm a little bit obsessed with Hudson, and I don't even know him. Like, he so like cool. the few times I've hung out with him and you guys, like, he's so funny. He is so aware. He is so yeah. freaking smart. He's another comedian. Don't tell him I said <laughs> that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, he really. I'm really impressed with the kid. Yeah. Hudson, if you're listening, keep it up, dude. You're doing a good job. Yeah. He's just so honest and sweet. And I, I, I just, I, I feel like he doesn't like kind of partake or include himself in a lot of what I associate like the young Gen Z kids to be doing. Yeah. Like he just seems like he's like a timeless person. Yeah. Um. I, I, I want to be like that. <laughs> I admire that about, like, um, like Maddie and, and Emily and Hudson and <laughs> Camel. <It's> like, <laughs> and you, like... Oh, yeah. You also, like, you're... There's a lot of things I admire about just, like, you and, and like, when you're combined with, like another person like Emily and like I don't know you guys just all freaking amaze me and like how Mm. humble you guys can be and like again like I love aware people I think no I know I love aware people and like you guys are just like there and I appreciate that a lot I don't know there's not well I'll reflect that compliment (laughs) onto them (laughs) um I have a lot of respect for the whole family yeah um and I'll throw it right back to you. <laughs> no, um, I, I too have a lot of respect for you. Um, that seemed like it was hard to say. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, that's my uncomfortable and awkwardness coming out. Yeah. It's funny. The topic of um, humor has mm. been on my mind lately because I also have been like trying to think about that and where, where it comes from. So I appreciate like the question coming from Emily because it was from me too. It was from both of us, <laughs> okay. but go ahead. <laughs> well, even like um, Lenny's birthday that we went to or whatever, like the way I handle um, awkward situations or just like situations I don't want to be in is by like joking, joking, yep. joking. <laughs> And I remember I made a very, um, very um, intense, like, joke about something, and everyone, like, nervous laughed, and I love that. What I, was the joke? I don't, <laughs> I don't think I should say it. I'll probably tell what you. What was later. it about, or, like, what was the... Um, okay, let me... What look. kind of, what was the genre of the joke? It was, um, <laughs> getting nervous. <laughs> um, it was a, let's see... I don't know how to put it without... Well, I'm being vague. Okay, so it was risky. Uh-huh. And was it something that only you could say? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was very subjective for sure. And and everybody didn't know how to respond of just like, is it okay to laugh at this? No, 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 no. Everyone um, everyone did laugh because I said it, I think, at the right time. Okay. And it was like, it was my actual emotions coming out. So it was mm-hmm. like... I don't, were you, I don't even know. I don't, (laughs) (laughs) I could tell you, but like, obviously don't put this in. Yes. That was a great joke. It landed. And I think James remarked about it. Yeah. And so like, that was the first, like James commenting on this, um, this joke I made. He's just like, I love your humor. And I'm just like, 
And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, my humor. What is my humor? And then I think I ran into Levi and I said something snarky to him, as I always do. Mm-hmm. And we have that relationship now and where I feel comfortable just being like, we're comfortable with where our relationship is. So mm-hmm. I walked by and I said something snarky and he laughed at it and I laughed and like, it's going to be the same thing next time I see him. And, and it, he brought that up too. He's just like your humor. Is so like, it's just there. Okay. So I think it's because people don't expect it out of you. And then whenever you throw the curveball, they're like, Oh, all right, let's go. Cause, and then I'm already gone. <laughs> yeah. 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 You've already gone. Yeah. Oh, little. Okay, so my my family has this weird thing um, recently with um, um, fighting a lot, um, and I I think when it, like to like like it's just like when they're starting to do something or like something like basic where it's just like who took the last tortilla? It's just like funny to like be like, are we gonna fight about it? Kind of stuff or just like because like it is a realistic thing that like my family is just a tentious group of people. Yeah. And, and so I like to throw out the obvious there in like the most ridiculous scenarios where I'm just like, are we really going to fight about this? Are we like going to do something or whatever? Or like starting opening up conversation, I think is another way of like, um, um, my approach to humor is like literally just starting a conversation and like move maneuvering maneuvering around yeah um, my awkwardness. So it's just like let's talk about it. Yeah, and I think that most people. Okay, I, I'll just say for myself, mm-hmm. not most people, but I like it's hard to talk about stuff and it's hard to be honest for me um, unless. Like Emily made this remark the other day where she's like, you can only have a serious conversation if you're doing a podcast. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's true. Like <laughs> I, for whatever reason, I guess I, I, just, I have to like create the space to have an intentional conversation, but I've found myself, that's kind of why I slowed down doing the podcast is because I was like, yeah, I'm kind of just using this as like my outlet for having real conversation And then I'm just not having conversation, like real conversation in everyday life. So like I've been trying to just like not record conversations as much um, and just like have real conversations with people without having this like pressure of like posting it online. Um, But as far as like the, um, oh shit, I lost where I was going. It's fine. Well, (laughs) I think that that's pretty cool that you're doing this too. Cause I don't think I, I've, I think this is like the longest I've had a conversation with you. Right. I mean, there is something, excuse me. <clears throat> there is something really kind of special about it for me personally, because let's be honest, we're all busy. Life is busy. Yeah. Life is stressful. Shit's going on. You got your job. I got my job. I got kids. You got your dogs, whatever it is there's not space for this to happen unless it's like kind of forced to be made. And sometimes that means (laughs) recording it, but it's also like, it doesn't, I'm like, I don't really care about the recording. I don't really care about posting online. I'm not like trying to get anything out of this conversation except like, this is actually an opportunity for me to like talk to people that I care about, um, have, more in-depth conversations, um, which is like, I think that's kind of what I was getting at is that it's like that shit is hard to come by these days for me. Um, unless I'm really seeking it out. Um, I lost it again. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I'm so out of practice. No, no, Um, you're good. I think that like, I don't know. It's like your own personal journey. And I, I like that too, because in, again, it's intentions. Yeah. Being intentional about something is so hard and it's like a challenge and you're challenging yourself with this. And again, I'm, I'm very happy that we're having this conversation because we've known each other for like eight, nine years. Yeah. And again, longest conversation (laughs) I've had with you. One-on-one for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And 
I appreciate that. Like, it, it also, like, gives me a new perspective of, like, who you are and, like, you're still the same person. I, I'll still think of you as the same person after this, but, like, it just only, like, solidifies and clarifies that I like you and, like, <laughs> like, Aw, thanks. You're, 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 you're an awkward person. Yeah, and, for sure. <laughs> and, and I love that. And, but you're still oh. having, like, very intense, um, conversations and like you're asking questions and I don't know like if that's helping your journey to be more intentional with um having these conversations in real life then that's yeah a good practice yeah I've, I've actually found that it has been very necessary for me to just learn because I've okay so I've never been had great communication skills Mm -hmm. like that's just something that I did not develop growing up um mostly sheltered but also like my schooling and my education was essentially a joke um so I have not really developed good verbal and communication skills and so this is kind of an opportunity for me to practice and I've actually found that it has actually really helped me in some aspects, I'm still really awkward. I'm still like, <laughs> I don't know what to say half the time. Um, but it also, I've found that I'm actually really, I'm extremely, extremely appreciative for anybody that's willing to do this with me. Because I understand that this is kind of just like, clunky or it can be clunky and it's like you have no reason to like engage with me or like no um what's the word like you don't you don't have to do this but you're choosing to do this yeah exactly and that's like really like humbling for me it's just like somebody's willing to just like talk to me for an hour or two I don't know I'm just like a very maybe I have low self-esteem but (laughs) no and I thank you for, for joining me. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think um, also everything that you've ever said or, like, have had to say, I don't know if you consider yourself, like, a low-energy person, but just, like, even, like, I yeah, because you would just, like, walk away and, like, go into your room yeah. whatever or whatever and, like, need that space to yourself. So, like, if you have the energy to say certain things, I feel like there's a lot of um, truth to everything that you're saying because you're just, like, shortcutting like just like say things yeah. as fast as I can with full intention and like get get it through because I don't have the energy to have this conversation more <laughs> for sure yeah that's 100 <laughs> percent. so I appreciate that too so like the things that you do say are very pure and like true because you're just like cutting it short and you're just like I I'm just doing it and this is what it is and that's I mean I've gotten in trouble for that too because I kind of associate my honesty with closeness Mm -hmm. like i i will only be honest and open and blunt to people that are close to me and that i feel like we have this like bond together and i need to remember that some people don't like interpret my quote-unquote honesty Mm -hmm. as like endearing (laughs) like they're like yo you're an asshole (laughs) um but I'm working on it. Yeah. It's still like a thing that I'm like trying not to put too much pressure on. Yeah. Um, and it's mostly, I mean, I've said this before, but it's like, this is only for me. Like this, I'm not catering to anybody. I'm just trying to like instill a discipline into my life of just like, try to have a conversation with somebody that you wouldn't necessarily like converse with in your regular weekly routine. Yeah. Um, okay. So on that note, we can kind of land the plane here. Uh, two quick things. What was the best? Okay. Maybe it's three things, but what was the best part of your week? And what was the worst part of your week? Um, I'll start with the worst. Cause I want to end it on a good, yeah. Um, the worst part was probably, um, let's see, what's today? Today's Sunday, April 30th. Okay. Ooh. 
Um, I guess the worst part was probably just like there was one day at work where I was just like, I hate it here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just miserable that whole day. And then just even like with that, I was just trying. I, I, a lot of adjustments are going to be coming because of that one day. And just like, mm. I just, yeah. But then I guess that's also the best part of this week too, is just realizing that like I need to change a lot of things and I don't, I want to change a lot of things and I yeah. have some positive things coming up and I've been kayaking once a week, which is nice. It's so, nice. Yeah. The Rio Grande. Um, Oof. Yeah. It's Ooh. going good. <laughs> so sloppy mosquitoes. Oh yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay. Mine was. Let's see here. I could do work related or I could do chicken related. Which one? Should, I should probably just do chicken related. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I guess that was honestly simultaneously. Yeah. Kind of like you, like the best and worst part of my week. We kind of, we got rid of our chickens and I was just kind of over it. I was tired of cleaning up their poop. Anytime we let them out, they just congregate on the, patio and poop everywhere and the compost is overflowing and the eggs are awesome but it was just like so much upkeep and it's you have to buy them feed and you have to buy the wood chips for them so it was just this re like ongoing cost that i didn't really account for but i was thinking about it i was like i probably spent a thousand dollars on those chickens altogether over the course of the last two or three years so not cost efficient. So I asked my parents, I was like, hey, do y'all want them? Uh, they're, they're, they're laying four eggs a day between all four of them were laying four eggs a day. <laughs> um, and I've got all, I've got the coop, I've got the organic chicken feed, I've got everything you need. I just want to relocate them. And my parents accepted the quest. Good for them. Thank you. Uh, but unfortunately, as life happens the chickens did not make it very long up in the mountains uh two of them died from a neighbor's pit bull that got out and then one of them just kind of disappeared probably got eaten by a coyote or a raccoon or a hawk or something so there's one chicken left currently unless it's already dead but uh, and it was the it was the dumbest of all the chickens <laughs> that actually made it because we started off with six uh-huh and there was just like one goofy one that was at the bottom of the pecking order that was just like ugly and quirky. Uh, but that one is the last one that's made it. Uh, so very sad. I loved my chickens, but I'm also really relieved to have I'm them sure. gone because I was just like, our, our property is not that big. Yeah. And they were just kind of a dominating presence. So that was the best and worst part of my week, probably simultaneously. That makes me laugh that the 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 dummy one. The dummy one. Just survived. Yeah. Um, okay, and then lastly. Okay, what is one thing that you implement on a daily basis? that you believe has helped you become a better person or has like caused you to level up in some capacity, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, I don't know. Like what is one thing you do on a daily basis? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but W R I T. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I write every day, even if it's just, hmm a few sentences or whatnot. Um, I used to do it in the morning, but it's just whenever I think of anything. And I think that's something that's, I hold dear to me. It's like anytime something pops up in my head, I write it down. Okay. It's made me more, that's going back to the taking control of my awareness kind of stuff. And I don't know, it's, it's given me a lot of perspective and I never used to like go back and, reread things that I wrote, but I, I've been very adamant about writing and then reading back and thinking about those things. And yeah. Dang. So that's a daily ritual. Yeah. 
and it, nice. it's like it's there's like no pressure to it at all it's just like a habit at this point that's awesome yeah it's like I don't know it's helped me a lot and I think I've been doing that for almost a, a year now and it's been nice I have an app on my computer mm-hmm. it's like a daily writing app mm-hmm. and there's two entries in it that are spaced out about six months apart. <laughs> Cause like I was like, I'm going to get into writing every <laughs> single day. I yeah. need to write more. I need to read more. And I had, I had two days. <laughs> I I see the value there and mm-hmm. I, I wish I could do it on a daily basis. I, I don't have the, I can't do it right now though. So that's, that's, Cool that you were able to get it to stick. I don't know how you did that. Well, I don't have children. <laughs> and like, yeah. like, honestly, I'm so grateful with like the time, like all my dad friends and all my mom friends make me appreciate the time that I have. And I think that also has like helped with me. I keep saying intentional this whole podcast Love or whatever, it. but like it's made me very intentional with my time and, and cherishing it while I while I can and who knows if I'll have children or if I'll have a family I'm very 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 content with the time that I have yeah for myself because of you guys thank you you're welcome <laughs> that's our service to Kaylin yeah you don't know how good you have it <laughs> <laughs> you no but I also do me. think about like oh what did I do before kids like I had so much free time yeah. and I wasted 80 percent of it I, just and like i don't want to be nothing. there i don't want to i don't want to like look back and be like what that's great i'm i'm really <laughs> happy that you're doing that okay i actually that was the last thing mm-hmm. but one more thing popped up in my head how is having a golden retriever um it's like the best thing um and the no i don't honestly i've had no bad experiences with him because is he barky no no okay that's mm. good that's good um the small one is because he's like i he's mixed with some kind of yelpy breed but he yelps a lot and it's really it's really like camper brings me so much joy like i'm obsessed with him like he is so he's like a puddle of water like he's mm very in tune with my emotions he's very goofy like he he'll do the like classic golden retriever like boneless just fall (laughs) and like not pay attention to the fact that he just fell like he'll always be okay there are things that like i take from him that like i apply to my life like he just like (laughs) falls on the floor and he's just fine there and i'm just like i want to be that yeah i want to fall that was a hard fall, buddy. And I just want to be okay and yeah. look up at you and just, argh, I love him. And he's not hyper, like, he does have a lot of energy, but he's not, it's it's not a lot, like, for what people have been warning me about and stuff. Yeah. Very calm, natured dog. When that he, sounds great. Yeah, he's wonderful. But the hair sucks. Okay, hair sucks. We, I mean, Emily and I have just been talking about in lieu of having more kids Mm -hmm. let's just start getting dogs yeah uh you don't like dogs i don't not like dogs confirmed write that down but (laughs) i like specific dogs i i i like a good dog Mm -hmm. i don't like bad dogs yeah (laughs) but golden retrievers seem like a lot of fun yeah like they're just like balls of like yeah happiness or something he makes me so happy like even when he makes me mad like there's some goofiness to him that i'm like yeah that's cute and like you're my best friend dude well i'm happy that you have two good dogs and a good cat oh yeah i always forget about the cat uh i don't even what cat do you have kevin oh she's still around yeah okay she's like a semi outdoor cat now too like she just like wanders off okay but yeah i have a long time with her yeah history yeah. cat history History. maybe baggage too cat baggage <laughs> yeah it's a little baggage of her own little pouch okay <laughs> that's it okay um anything else you want to say mm, 
No, I, I appreciate you having this conversation with me. And mm -hmm. maybe we should, if you want, <laughs> <laughs> we should talk some more. <laughs> On camera or off camera? Maybe we should just like set them up as default and just, <laughs> just <laughs> have a conversation like yeah, this again. This is the only way we can converse going forward yeah. is that if there's two mics and two cameras. Yeah. For a split second, I thought about getting coffee with you. And I like, like, just like how that would go about. We could do it. Yeah. I did it with James last week. Yeah. It was actually really hard to pull off. <laughs> just with planning between like two sets of kids and yeah. jobs and stuff. And just Gemini's. It's same. <laughs> like when I texted you yesterday, this is your last chance to bail. I was kind of like, if she bails, then I don't have to do a podcast tomorrow and it's out of my control. Yeah. Um, I'm really happy you didn't, I am happy yeah. you didn't bail. Uh, yes, I actually really, 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 really genuinely appreciate this conversation. So thank you. Um, and if anybody was listening, thanks for, thanks for listening. This is Kaylin Shaw. I mean, Instagram, like, do you care about it? Like for me? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Uh, uh, <laughs> catch her kayaking the Rio Grande. Yes um at some point i'll probably one day put out your fire yeah yeah kaylin will barge in with a big old hose not those kind of <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to end the podcast uh -huh. okay goodbye everybody have a good day